see y'all, I see y'all. So listen, so before we get started, I do have a free gift for you. Everything that I'm about to present today is on a PDF document that I'm going to give to you. So if you follow me on Instagram and go to my bio, then you can have the PDF slash presentation of the entire presentation today. So y'all want that, yeah? Yeah. All right, awesome, awesome, awesome. So before we get started, I wanted to let you guys say hey to my Facebook audience. Say hey. Hey, hey what's up? <laughs> here, we here, we live today. So listen, I had to cut y'all off. Y'all didn't pay to come here. So who? I, <laughs> all right, so let's get started. All right. So today, we're going to be teaching on learning how to day trade. First, I'm going to give you an introduction. Then we're going to go to the purpose of the chart, which I'm pretty much going to show you how to day trade cryptocurrency, stock indexes, and foreign exchange if you are a foreign exchange trader, okay? And then we're going to how to read the candles. I'm pretty much going to give you a candlestick anatomy and then executing your trades. We've been talking about cryptocurrency the entire time we've been here today, and I've had people to ask me the question, how do I know when is the best time to get into Bitcoin? When is the best time to get into a Ripple? And there are, you can actually time the market. That's what I'm going to teach you guys today. So, just a little bit about me. My name is Dr. Justin Clemens. Hey, y'all. I'm a day and swing trader. I'm the CEO of Club Millionaire University. I've been trading full time for about four years. And I have been previously in banking. So, what does that mean? I was actually a credit underwriter. So I was a person that was giving you your car loans, um, your credit card, all of those things. I was giving you all that information. And so I specialize in foreign exchange and cryptocurrency as well as stock indexes. And the reason I got into this field is because I was trying to find something that was not going to put me back in jail. So yes, I have, I have a testimony of actually going through it and um, being faced with 20 felonies and about to be in prison for about 75 years, but y'all say in prison, so I'm here. Hey. <laughs> so I, will, I just say to God be the glory for that because it was only him that allowed me to be here today. So let's get started. And at the bottom, you see my Instagram. So go to the Instagram, IG, Dr. Justin Clements. The website is at the bottom as well. That's going to help you get this PDF document that I'm presenting today so that go, you can to go home so you can study, all right? All right, so we have a couple people that are novices, some people who are trend traders, and some people who are technical analysis traders. So what is a novice trader? A novice trader is an inexperienced person. So you know people that tell you, you know, look at those who are right now, it's going up, up, up. They're, they're saying that because they they really don't understand when is the best time to buy. They're buying it based on what they believe the market is about to do, not what the market is actually doing. All right, they buy and sell on impulse, and they are influenced by other people in the market. So they're influenced by other novice traders, people who don't really understand how to trade. And then you have the trend traders. I was going up uh, about a couple of days ago, then they're buying based on what they see in the market, and they're holding long term. And then we have something that's called technical analysis traders. That's what I teach. I teach you how to technically analyze a stock chart, a foreign exchange chart, a crypto chart. We are experienced in the market. We base our market analysis based on what we see and historical values. So what does that mean? So whatever happened before, it's going to happen again. Y'all understand that? Y'all following? Okay, so if it's happened before in the market, it's going to happen again. That's what technical analysis traders do, all right? So next, this is a Dow Jones chart. I know y'all probably like, what in the world is this? All right, this is what we look for when we're looking to take a trade in the market. By the time, and I've got 10 minutes left to teach y'all this, you're going to know how to read this chart like an expert. All right, that sounds good? You want to be able to read that chart? So, the purpose of the chart. The charts tell you where the bank, yes, I said the bank. The charts tell you where the banks are buying and selling. If you don't know this already, the bank is the one that moves the market. We in our, you know, we, we think, you know, we got a couple thousand, a couple million dollars. We're not the people who are moving the market in the direction either it's going to buy or sell. We're not the person that's moving the market. The banking is 
institutions, the people who have the big money, are moving the market up and down. They also, the chart also helps you time the market, all right? So the charts are the difference between your trend traders and your technical analysis investors. Many times they also show the difference between a novice as well as a professional investor, all right? And then next, what if, what if you knew the price, the specific price that a person was going to buy in the market? What if you knew what a specific price a seller was getting ready to sell in the market? I'll give you an example. What if you knew a couple months ago that when Bitcoin hit about 60 grand, it was going to sell out? You would have knew to got jump out of the market, right? Or at least take some of your profit out of the market. And what if you knew that at $32,000 that Bitcoin was going to jump back up again? You would buy back in, right? Right. So the charts tell the story of what is about to happen. Now, we're going to get to how to read the candles. So like I said, I got a couple more minutes up and y'all can learn this real quick. Okay? So this, what I just showed you guys on the Dow Jones chart are candlesticks. Just like, you know, you go to Bath and Body Works, you get a one-week candle, a two-week candle. These are candlesticks. The green ones are your bullish candles. Bulls mean they're going into a buy, they're going, in, they're going up in price, all right? Then you have your red candlesticks. These are your bears. If you ever on CNBC and they start saying, oh, we're in a bear market today, they're saying that the market is going down into a sale. People are selling off. All right, how to read this green candlestick is because it's going up in price, it's going up in value. The price of the candle, or more so, how the candle opens, it opens at the bottom. It creates a low price, which means the market, before it goes up, it goes down first to create that bottom thing you see. The bottom thing at the bottom is called a wick, a W-I-C-K, it's a wick. It creates the bottom of the candle, then it creates the high, and then it closes, all right? On the right side, which is your bearish candle, it creates and opens at the top of the candle, then it goes down and closes, creates your bottom wick, which are your selling candlesticks, all right? Are y'all following? Yes. All right, so green and red candles, all you gotta remember, green candles, we call green apples, and then we call them red apples, all right? So it shows you buyers and sellers. This is how the market is made up of buyers and sellers. Now, this here is a Bitcoin chart. This is a 15 minute chart. That means every 15 minutes, a new bullish or a new green apple and a new red apple forms. Now this one is another chart. This is another Bitcoin chart, and it's showing us historical value. All it's showing us is that when Bitcoin went to a high price, it came down to a low, which is about 32,000, bounced off of a low, which as you see when that red line is marked that, it's a 50 and 61% mark. That's when Bitcoin went right back up again. So I'm gonna show y'all how you can know, or how you're gonna be able to know when you get back to your cryptocurrencies, or you get into any market, how to recognize when to buy this, or when to sell it. So, a lot of times on your devices that you're trading on, on your Coinbase, on trading, whatever you're using to look at your market analysis, they're giving you a line graph. This is what you wanna see in order to get and know what I need to, to do in order to get into a buy or sell into the market. So the first thing we do, is step one, this is the same Bitcoin chart. We look for the peaks in the market. Look for your peaks. The peaks are those red circles that are marked in the chart. Peaks are a place where the market is pointing down or the market is pointing up on a line graph, all right? It's the part of the chart that's pointing down or up. So once you get the peaks pointed out, then you have to make sure the peak is touching in the same area more than once. As long as it's touching in that area more than once, then you'll know this is the place 
mark the locator. Step two, you're gonna draw a box across where the peaks are located, giving you the area where the market has been based on history. Because the market has been there before, it's going to revisit there again because that's the place where the bank is buying and selling. So step number three, you switch back to your candlesticks. So you do it first on your line graph to find your peaks. That's the easiest way to do it. You go back to step number three to go back to your candlestick graph. Once you get to your candlesticks, now I can see where the market has stopped. If you look at the bottom blue box on that chart, that bottom blue box tells me that the market stopped going down based on my candlesticks at $32,000 on Bitcoin. It actually stopped at that area. And those wicks, the lines on the bottom of those candles, show me that the market is rejecting off of that area. What does rejection mean? It means that it's something that's there, they're like, oh, we don't like this price. I want to buy based on the price that's located at now. So once that area hits, I know then that it's time for me to buy back into the market. Now before I go to the next part, look at the top blue box, and there are two red markers around there. And you see there's another stall. That's where the market fell off, based on your bullish and your bearish candlesticks. The market sold all the way off and went back to $32,000. What's happening is that the bank, again, the bank again is saying this price is way too high, you better cut it. That's what's happening. It's telling us at that moment that the, the bank is saying, we don't want to buy Bitcoin at this price. We want to sell some of our shares. We want to sell some of our, uh, our what we have already in our portfolio. So we're going to sell it out there. So they sell the market out back to a place where they want to buy back in. So they're selling a piece and they buy back in into the area. And once they buy back in, they start breaking through levels, major price levels. Bitcoin, and this is just a hint, Bitcoin tends to stall at major price levels like 30,000, 35,000, 40,000, 45,000, 50,000. Pretty much every even number, Bitcoin is gonna stall at. So if you see Bitcoin falling off again, you know we're getting to a major level where we're getting ready to fall. Now, step four, you execute your trade. You go into your portfolio, you go into your Coinbase, you go into whatever you're trading, whatever you're trading with, your Fidelity accounts. You go into that and then you buy into the market based on what you just analyzed on your chart. So that means today, after today, everybody should be able to know that I know how to analyze a crypto chart. I know when to get back into Ripple. I know when to get into XLM or whatever. I know when to get into Solana. Whatever cryptocurrency you're in, I know how to get into a stock. This also works very well for Apple. It works very well for Google because all charts are made up of line graphs. Every chart is made up of candlesticks and all charts are made up of banks buying and selling. All right? Yeah. Good. That's good. Right. Woo! Woo!
amazing connections in networking. You've given them so many amazing people to teach them here on the stage. Good energy, good food, a little bit of alcohol. <laughs> Can you give, a little bit. Can you give us some final? How, how did you see this event? How do you feel about it? Well, you know what? First of all, give yourself a round of applause because it's not too That's my challenge to you. What would you challenge them to do? 
But I, but I also want to give a good, uh, big shout out to my staff, Oswald, Maya, Casey, the whole team out there working so hard on my behalf. I know I put them through hell sometimes. <laughs> because, you know, I, I cracked that whip. <laughs> but you know, they made it really happen for me. Um, do not let this just end right here. This is a very memorable event. So you guys should be hashtagging and posting and creating content from this event with pictures of everyone, pictures of yourself, selfies of the stage. It should be all over social media how a success as it was. Don't let it go to waste. I mean, really, really pump it out there. You ain't got tag if you don't want to, I don't care. As long as you make sure to let everyone know you, you, you were here, that's very, very important. That's all I ask. Yes, let people know that you're here. You know that's such a psychological play when it comes to social media because perception is everything. And if you show your followers, your family, your friends, hey, I, I'm out here learning. I'm out here, you know, bettering myself, investing in myself, looking for new ways, new opportunities to grow. It's gonna want to, you're gonna want to encourage other people to do the same just by you showing up and doing that. So sharing is such a great, a great idea. Yeah, sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. So also uh, tonight. Again, starting around 11 or 12, we're having an after party for this event at a place called The Exchange. E X C H A N G.